Good afternoon. Today we're going to be discussing, analysing and evaluating models used to value equities. Our groups formed of Amy, Chloe, Frank, Grace, Judy, Lightchi and myself, Lincoln. So, to introduce, we need to understand what equity is and why it is important. Essentially, equity is composed of stakeholders, equity and ownership interest fees. The reason it is important is because it can be perceived as a lifeblood of organisations, as it represents a value of investment, is a source of collateral, it can also be used to measure efficiency and effectiveness of an organisation, and more importantly, it can be also used as a source of finance. Secondly, we need to understand what valuation is. Uh, valuation is a science and a process of determining the amount or value of an item. Uh, the value is hugely dependent on the type of model that's used uh, in order to value the item. And why, we need to understand why there is a need to value equities. Equi uh, valuing equities enables companies with sound business models to command a premium in the market. So, how do we value these equities? We use valuation models. The two main category uh, categories are the absolute valuation models and the relative valuation models. Now I'm going to analyze the present value model. This model estimates the intrinsic value of security as the present value of the future benefits is expected to be received from the, from the security. Uh, the first model is a dividend discount model, general model. The benefits are often defined in terms of cash expected to be distributed in shareholders. And constant growth, DDM, assumes that dividends grow at a constant compound growth rate, G. Um, the third is free cash flow to equity model. The benefits are often defined in terms of cash flow available to, to be distributed to the shareholders after meeting capital expenditures and uh, working capital needs. Here we have the dividend dis discount model, general model. As you can see in the screen, this part includes two, two formula. The first is a single period with no growth rate and second is a multi-period with a no growth rate. Uh, in, as for the Golden, God, Golden model, the, this model is introduced by Golden in 1959. There are some assumptions. The first is that dividend growth as, grows as a constant compound growth rate, G. Dividend growth rate is forever, it is a perpetual and never changed. Um, and the third is that the required rate of return is constant all the time. And the formula can be viewed in the screen. Um, then we come to free cash flow to equity models, the FDA, FDA, FDA models. The implicit assumption is that the FDA, FDA is paid out to stockholders. The remaining earnings are invested only in operating assets. Here is the formula of the FDA, FDA models. And we do prepare an example of how to calculate the FDA, FDA dividend discount model. The success of the DDM is that just justifications are rock solid and indisputable. Dividends tend to stay consistent over a long time. The lack of subjective subjectivity makes the model more reliable. Dividends are the only measure of valuation available to minority shareholder, and it is a sign of mature business. And we can also see some limitations of the DDM. The model is only applicable to mature, stable companies. And this discount model is full of too many assumptions and it might not be related to earnings. In some countries, the tax structure are created in a way that the capital gains might be taxed lower than dividend. As for FCFE model, the success is that the dividend do not mean good performance, while free cash flow means value creation. And the pre presence of free cash flow is that almost certain signal that firm is in good financial health. The limitation of FCFE model is that free cash flow is very difficult to predict and it is not suited for short-term investing and the formula is too complicated. Now I will pass my slide to my colleague. So residual income valuation is a method of equity valuation which properly accounts for the cost of equity capital. The word residual refers to any opportunity cost in excess which is measured as compared to the book value of the shareholder's equity and the income that a firm generates after accounting for the true cost of capital is then the residual income.
And the basic idea behind this approach is that a rate of return is required by the shareholders from their resources which are under the management of the firm, provide compensation for their opportunity cost and account for the, for the level of the risk. In calculating a firm's residual income, the key calculation is to determine its equity charge. Equity charge is simply a firm's total equity capital multiplied by the required rate of return of that equity. According to Austin 1995, he suggests that the value of common stock is equal to the book value of equity plus the discounted stream, cash, discounted stream of future residual income, where the discount rate is the required return of common equity. Notice that the formula starts with the book value as the base value for the common stock. There are some considerations that we should address when using the residual income models. For example, the clean surplus relation does not always hold, and the past earning is often used to predict the future earning figures. And for evaluation, the main advantages of the models is that it puts less weight on the terminal value, and it is useful for non-dividend non paying firms, and it is useful for firms that without ca free cash flows. And on the other hand, the main disadvantages are that it relies on the accounting data and it also relies on the clean surplus relation. Now I will pass on to Lai Chi. Hi, I'm going to introduce about the asset-based model. Under the theory underlying the asset-based model is that the value of a business is equal to a sum of business net assets. Or we can see the simplest way of thinking about the asset approach is this formula. Asset minus liability equals to net asset value, which we all know as the equity on the balance sheet. So, when do we usually use asset-based model? There are two main circumstances. One is that the company is uh, has some like problem of liquidity and is no longer able to operating, um, as an going concern. And another is that the business is based on assets rather than income, such as a production company, which activities are based on operating equipment. So, uh, we start evaluation with our balance sheet. Ideally, this will be the same date as the evaluation date. And secondly, we restate the assets and the liability as the fair market value where necessary. And this can be the most judgmental step in the whole approach. And lastly, we need to identify unrecorded assets and liability as well as their impact will be on the valuation. And this may be off balance assets. Different from other models which are more focused on the income statement activity, and this model primarily utilizes the balance sheet. However, intangible assets cannot be easily re recognized compared to tangible assets, so this model is likely to be applied to those business are mainly ba based on the intangible assets. All items we need to value can be divided into three categories as shown on the slides and uh, uh, most of the items on the balance sheet can be recognized in a very straightforward nature. What I want to mention is about intangible assets. For example, self-created intangibles are not be put on balance sheet of a company and therefore do not automatically acquire and valuing and ending to the balance sheet. However, intangibles ended through purchase may exist and the skills of the valuation specialist need to be considered. Advantage of the asset based model is, it is that it is clear and easy to value because just using company's balance sheet. Although it is a very rough view, it is still a way that helps some, someone generally value a company before a deeper look into each item on the balance sheet. However, asset-based model does not provide not much useful information when forecasting future companies' cash flows and also can be affected when a company has a large number of intangible assets. That's all about absolute valuation model. Then we'll uh, pass to my colleague Judy and Amy. I'm going to talk about the relative valuation models, which are business valuation method, that is the value of an asset is compared to the values assessed by the market for similar or comparable assets. It is an alternative to absolute value models. However, they are different in a sense, since the relative valuation models believe that the market may be wrong about a given stock. There are many different types of relative valuation models. One of the most popular relative valuation models is the price earnings ratio. It is calculated by dividing stock price by earnings per share. A company with a high PE ratio is considered overvalued, otherwise it is undervalued. 
You can see an example here, which is very easy to use and calculate. However, the limitations of the PE ratio should be taken, con to, taken into consideration. For example, values and growth rates of companies may, of, may, may often vary widely bec between sectors due to the differing ways companies earn money and to the differing timelines during which companies earn that money. Now I'll pass to my colleague, Judy. Enterprise value can be thought of as a theoretical takeover price if the company were to bought. Enterprise value multiple is commonly used by investors. It, the formula is enterprise value divided by earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So relative valuation modules are simple and uh, easy to understand by investors. It can state the valuation from the market. It also has some disadvantages. The ratio sometimes cannot be compared across markets. When markets have wide fluctuations, the fluctuation range of PE and PB will be big, which may mislead the valuation of enterprise. Now let's move to Grace. In conclusion, I'm going to briefly talk about the models we introduced from analyst's perspective and academic perspective. Active research analysts are tasked with providing unbiased view of stocks, bonds, and other financial instruments. Sales side analysts typically focus on giving specific recommendations and buy side analysts focus on client suitability. Therefore, some multiply models are continuously important since they were proposed. Analysts use these models to compare a firm's value with its competitors to determine the firm's equity value. And many analysts perceive the discounted cash flow method to become more significantly important for them now. And from an academic perspective, active valuation methods can be broadly classified into balance sheet method, discounted cash flow method, and uh, relative valuation method. The present value approach is the radically correct approach for estimating intrinsic value. Residual income models are based on economic value. Relative valuation methods make comparison easily. In a whole, these models developed during a long period and are based on many prior literature and theoretical hypotheses. Using these methods, we can value the equity from multi-aspects. That's all our presentation. Thank you for watching.